new Audi RS3 versus Mercedes AMG A45S on one of our favourite roads in the UK. Buckle up because this should be one of the most exciting twin tests of this year. Audi Sport reckons the new 58 Grand RS3 has become a serious driver's car this time round, featuring a heavily revised four-wheel drive system and a new diff at the back to make it more responsive to your inputs and just faster across the ground, full stop. Its 2.5 litre five cylinder engine has also been reworked to produce a thumping 394 bhp and 500 newton metres of torque. It doesn't have just as much raw power as the mighty AMG A45S though, and it costs a touch more too. But the RS3 counters by being lighter than the Mercedes so it's 0 to 62 time is a tenth better at an eye-watering 3.8 seconds. Its top speed of 180 miles an hour is also 12 miles an hour up on the AMG. So on paper, they are pretty tough to separate, but on the road, they are very different to one another. And this is why. I've always been a bit of a fan of the Audi RS3. And lots of my colleagues have thought I've been slightly mad over the years for liking the RS3 because it's come in for a fair bit of stick for not really hitting the spot in terms of being a full-on driver's car, not really being committed enough, being a bit wooden in its chassis and handling. All of which I, I sort of agreed with slightly, but it was a heck of a practical car. I ran one for a year and no, it didn't bore its way into my soul and wasn't the best, most responsive, most lovely car that I'd ever spent lots of time with, but I really liked that RS3. It was quick, it was capable, it was spacious, it was beautifully made, but that was then, this is now. An Audi Sport claims to have thrown pretty much most of the kitchen sink at the new RS3 to finally turn it into the driver's car that it has never quite been. I have spent some time in the new RS3 and I don't know if I fully believe them. <laughs> it does do certain things better than before. It does definitely ride better than before. It is definitely more comfortable. It is definitely a little bit quicker than before, which is saying something because the previous one wasn't slow. But I mean, we're talking about 394, 95 odd horsepower here and 500 newton meters of torque. This thing is seriously searingly rapid. It kind of feels and sounds like this. I mean, 10 years ago, this thing would have been declared illegal, it's so fast. The gearbox also works pretty well. It's a seven speed DSG. The ratios are slightly differently spaced from the way they were before with, I think tops a little bit longer and they've just messed around with the ratios to again make it faster in the mid-range where it really matters the most. I also like the fact that you've got this RS button here. So you've got an individual mode where you can just select your setting for everything or you put it in performance mode where it just puts everything into super nuts. I've got this in the fruitiest setting of all, you know, performance spec with the engine noise turned up, the throttle response turned up, everything turned up to 11 and It's a deeply nice noise that it's making, but I wish it was louder. It's still got this veil of, you know, let's do the tie up, let's be really sensible about this. All right, oh, sometimes we can be a little bit mad, but not absolutely <laughs> balls to the wall mad. I just want this to feel a little bit more involving. Given that Audi have basically put their flag in the floor and said, this time we have made this for serious drivers, serious driving enthusiasts. I'm a fairly serious driving enthusiast and it's not quite floating my boat. I have to say the moment you climb in the Mercedes, it just feels like a more serious car. I'd still like to be lower, just like I would in the Audi, but it just, you are clamped into position behind this wheel with more intent, with more 
conviction and immediately that you start driving this thing you think mm, this is properly focused this is a rather senior vehicle and I need to be concentrating fully mm. otherwise it might do some things that could get a bit out of hand I don't think it feels much faster than the Audi I think they feel pretty much identical to one another the Audi does feel more muscular in the mid range mid to low range but at the top fruitier than the Audi. I know the Audi makes a lovely noise, distinctive noise, much more, not a better noise because I love the way this Merc sounds, but just it's beefier, the Audi. I love this button on the steering wheel too. So you've got comfort, you've got sport, you've got sport plus and you've got race. Porsche do that in almost exactly the same way and it just works a treat because you just scroll it up, scroll it down depending on your mood, the road you're on, the corner you're driving through and as a result when you put it in the naughty mode, either of the top two naughty modes, and start giving it some beans, the A45 absolutely flies. to find things to, to not like about this car. It's just got stance and it looks low and it looks wide and it looks naughty and mean and expensive. This is how I want a small, very fast Audi to look. And I think they've really nailed that. I also really like the interior as well. This interior feels really high quality. It feels a bit more sporting than before, but Okay, it costs whatever it costs, 56, 57,000 quid, and it feels it inside. This feels like a proper quality piece of kit. I love the dials, the way you can change all the TFT displays. The comm system is brilliant. The nav works really well. The MMI integration is definitely more intuitive to use and definitely a bit faster to use. That was one of the problems with the old RS3. You'd get in it and then sort of a minute or so later the nav would start to, to know where it was sometimes there's none of that with this it's, it's definitely not much. I'm still not convinced that this is fully nailed the kind of driver satisfaction bit when it comes to proper hardcore enthusiasts it's very efficient and it is a lot more comfortable than before but it's not absolutely igniting my emotions and what I'm struggling to work out is whether that really matters or not do you buy a 55, 56,000 pound mega hatch because you want it to absolutely blow you away across a fabulous B road like this? Or do you buy a car like that so that it is super quick, it is super refined, it's beautifully made, it's the full package? I, I, I'm not sure. really prefer the focus of the Mercedes. The A45 feels properly unhinged and rear wheel drive <laughs> if you stick it in race. And when you put it in the fruit of the setting, it really does start to feel quite nuts, this car. I do like the interior of the A45 as well. Again, it's, it just feels more focused on the driver than the Audi's interior, even though I think the Audi feels like a higher quality product inside. It just feels beautifully built inside, does the RS3. This, this thing is fine, but it doesn't kind of ooze slightly unnecessary quality. And I don't like some of these buttons down here. They really do feel quite cheap and plasticky. And you don't get a whiff of anything like that inside the RS3. What I think is the kind of defining difference between these two is that you're never going to go anywhere near nine or 10 tenths in either of these cars on the public road. And if you did, you should be locked up, quite frankly. So therefore, what matters is how they make you feel at kind of six, seven tenths, because you're never really gonna go much further than that on the road in either of them, because their capabilities are so vast. And at six, seven tenths, I get a lot more satisfaction out of the A45 than I do out of the RS3. And it's just the touchy and feely bits, it's the response from the throttle, it's the steering response, it's the feel of these seats, it's the way the diff, 
makes it feel like it's ready for a bit of oversteer sometimes. It just feels like a more committed car. So it's a really close one, is this? The AMG definitely has the more involving chassis, but the RS3 has the better engine and gearbox and definitely feels like the classier car inside. Thing is though, they're both eye-wateringly expensive compared with lesser hot hatches, such as the Civic Type R and Golf R, neither of which would be much slower over a road like this. So you do wonder if the world really needs mega hatchbacks like these. Then again, there aren't many cars at any price that can match these two in full flight over a road like this. So who knows? Forced to make a choice, we'd go for the A45 AMG just. But the smart money would probably still go on a top-end hot hatch rather than a full-blown mega hatch, leaving you with at least 20 grand to spend or save on something else.